What's up guys, this is Dezul Almeida back for Goa Property Deal. Today we're going to be discussing one of the most important parts of real estate in general, that is selling your property in Goa. Uh, we're going to be discussing this topic in five parts in total. Now, without much delay, let's begin today's video. Now, part one does not involve deciding the value of your property, but it involves checking whether your respective property is ready for sale. And by this, I mean, do you have a title for your respective property? Do you have a full possession of your respective property? Uh, this involves uh, having a respective set of documentation will help, which help us create something called a clear title report or a flow chart. This involves basically explaining and declaring that this respective property from ancient times or from history, its origin, from where it's come, from the people it's been passed on to, irrespective of if you bought it or if you've inherited it. Uh, you'll see a set of documents on the screen right now. These documents help us basically draw a title report and uh, a flow chart which help us understand that this property is being passed or handed over from this respective set of people and you are the full and final owner of this respective property. If you do not have a title report, it can be a major issue as a clear the title, the better your ability to sell, the higher the valuation you can get for a property. Uh, a lot of the times if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you lack a respective title report on your property or if you lack the proper full position in terms of documentation for your property, it can not only create an issue for your valuation, but it might not, you might not just be able to sell your property as well. Hence, it's very important to check whether your respective property is ready for sale or not before even deciding the value of it or even putting it in the market to begin with. Now, once you're in a position to sell your property after you're assured that you are the final owner of your respective property and the true owner of your respective property, the next step of part two involves declaring the price of your property and how you wish to market and sell your property. Now, in terms of price, you have multiple sources that you can refer to, online real estate consultants or just uh, finding in your local area. You can ask people around you who you know and you can get a fair idea about the valuation of your property. Be fair to keep in mind the various characteristics of your property before you decide the valuation of it. Things like road accessibility, documentation, availability, uh, topography, classification of your land will all decide the respective price of your property. Uh, in terms of marketing, you have uh, two ways of doing it. You can either do it yourself by using online channels if you're well aware of the entire process involved in real estate uh, sale or you can proceed with hiring a real estate firm or a real estate uh, consultancy. Be, fair, be aware not to sign any MOUs or agreements easily with the real estate firms as you can get caught in a very big uh, trap that happens a lot in Goa. Uh, once you, if you do hire a real estate agent, feel, make sure that you uh, confirm your respective commission charge uh, structure with the respective real estate uh, agency that they, they would be charging you. Avoid getting into any MOUs unless required with any real estate firm as this can create a lot of hassle not only for you but for the future of your estate as well. Now let's move on to part 3. Coming to part 3, this basically involves your respective uh, buyer or investor who wishes to purchase your property after you have agreed upon the respective price that he is willing to pay for your property. Once you have a confirmed buyer, it is your responsibility to hand over all respective documentation that he has requested uh, so that he can get into the verification process of the property or the title process of the property. Now for this you need to basically give them a period of 15 to 20 days because that's the basic time that it takes. You also need to make sure that before you hand over any documentation or valuables or valuable documentation of your property, you have signed or some form of offer letter or some form of offer letter has been given from the respective uh, buyer. Uh, against your property. Now make sure this is only an offer letter, not any form of MOU or agreement that you are getting into that will tie you up, that, will, uh, that allows you to only sell this property to this, to this respective uh, buyer. <coughs> this offer letter should include things such as the respective consideration, uh, the respective amount that the buyer plans to pay, uh, the time frame, the payment structure, and all other small details that you wish to have for your respective property. Once the respective buyer has uh, agree agreed to purchase your property, you need to make sure that you are taking some form of booking amount against your property, but this has to be done against any form of MOU. If you do take some booking amount, please make sure that you find, if you are signing any agreement, that it involves the, you, ha you having the ability to refund this amount in the situation that something does not work out in the side of the buyer, and the buyer does not have any ability to sit and prolong this entire process of purchase for your respective property. Make sure that you spend money from your own side for your respective legal team or for a respective lawyer to vet any form of documentation that you're signing. Never joke with documentation that you're about to sign against your property. They are a very, very crucial part and have a very great importance. Do not cheap out on a lawyer as well as they have high value 
for the future of you and your legality of your property. Now coming to part 4. Part 4 basically includes your final closure process. Once your respective buyer is satisfied with the title and the legality of the respective uh, property, uh, he and he wishes to conclude the respective uh, purchase transaction. In this case, the first step would include sale the, drafting the respective sale deal. This would be done by the buyer, but it is your responsibility as a responsible uh, seller or a property owner to have the same verified by your respective unbiased uh, legal team. Uh, this can help you safeguard your respective interests as well as making sure that everything is correct and there is no issue that can arise in the future after you have sold the property. Uh, when you sell a property, you have to pay a respective uh, tax deduction uh, that is called uh, tax deducted at source or TDS. Now in the case, uh, if you are getting 1 CR for your respective property, if you are an Indian citizen, the respective buyer would be paying 1% of 1 CR, which is 1 lakh against your respective TDS. That means what the final amount you would be getting in your account would be 99 lakhs. Uh, whereas you can go ahead and make sure that the respective uh, TDS has been accounted for appropriately with your respective CA. Uh, in this situation where you are an OCI card holder or uh, your uh, overseas Indian citizen, in that uh, situation you would have to be paying, you would uh, the respective buyer would be paying 22.5% of your respective tax consideration against one CR. That means 22.5% uh, would be deducted against one CR and the balance would be paid to you as remuneration and the balance would be sent by the respective buyer against your respective TDS in your name. And finally coming to part 5 which basically involves uploading the sale lead draft that has, been upload, that has been approved by you as a seller and by the buyer to the respective registrar that the property comes uh, under. This would be done by the buyer's uh, legal team. Once you uploaded a sale year draft, it can take anything between a couple of days to maybe even more than a week or even two weeks or more in some situation for the registrar to revert back with an approval or to revert back with a rectification or some verification or a requesting for more documentation in order to give the approval. Once Finally, once the sale lead has been approved by the registrar, the buyer would be going ahead to pay the respective uh, stamp duty and registration fees also declared by the registrar. Uh, here are some various slabs uh, which the registrar would be computing the respective stamp duty registration against. Uh, the slab keeps changing uh, based on uh, the sale lead value or the property value that has been declared in the sale lead. Uh, you can, this, uh, the stamp duty registration can range anything between uh, 6.5. Uh, all the way to even 9.5% together depending on the slab it would be coming under. Now on completion of the respective uh, payments, uh, you have to go ahead and sign the final sale lead draft. Once you have signed the sale lead draft with your fingerprints between you and the buyer, the same would be uploaded to the registrar. Once you the reg once it uploaded to the registrar, the registrar would be giving you a respective appointment which can be 2-3 days away or even more in some situation. On the day of the appointment, it's your responsibility to make sure that all payments have been cleared. Uh, it's highly recommended that if you take a check payment, the check has been cleared as it can take anything between 1 to 3 days for a check clearance. The same has been cleared before the date of the signing. If you are accepting a demand draft, then in that situation, it is highly recommended that you accept a demand draft in the real estate world as it is one of the most safest uh, method of accepting payments in the real estate industry. As the demand draft is issued through verification by the respective buyer's bank itself. This can be accepted on the day of the signing as well. Uh, on the day, uh, once the signing has been done, it's your responsibility that you hand over all original documents immediately to the respective uh, buyer and conclude the deal. Now, I'll be making another video for post-sale uh, responsibilities of you in terms of tax compliances uh, and uh, duties uh, post-sales. A very small gesture from our firm uh, to the landowners and property owners in uh, Goa. Uh, to understand the entire process of uh, what they would be getting in once they decide to sell their respective properties. Uh, we will be coming up with much more content regarding various aspects of Goan Real Estate World. Please feel free to like, share and subscribe our content. Uh, do share our content with your friends and family who own property or who are, sell who are planning to sell their respective properties. Feel free to connect with Goa Property Deal on the numbers below or on the respective communications below for any queries or for any details or you can also comment uh, if you have any other ideas or if you have any recommendations or if you would like to know any specific topic of the Goan Real Estate World. Uh, my name is Azul Almeida for Goa Property Deal. Thank you so much again.